Hello and welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Dan Costa. He is Sasha Segan, and we've got a great show for you today. We're going to break down the top tech news. We're going to pull one cool thing off the shelf from the lab and show you, and get to some of your reader questions. Sasha, let's get right to the news today. There's there's reports that Apple is in talks with Comcast, presumably about some kind of video deal. But it turns out it's not really a content deal. It's really a pure tech play, and it butts right up against these net neutrality rules that everybody's trying to figure out. Okay, yeah, you thought that Apple was going to disrupt TV, but no, the cable companies win, okay? The, 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 the moral of the story is the cable companies win, no one will save you. And basically this deal that Apple is considering doing with Comcast, uh, there's a range of possibilities. And the first possibility is that Apple would pay Comcast for uh, a special pipe to traffic for traffic for an Apple TV. So that if you're doing streaming and downloading on your Apple TV, it won't get clogged up by other traffic. It'll be extra fast. This is like deals that Netflix has been making yeah. with cable companies recently. Because um, everybody's trying to figure this, you know, there's all this capacity. There's Everybody wants to deliver video over these pipes, but there's a limit to how much you can deliver and what the quality is going to be like. So everybody's trying to cut these backroom deals in order to make sure their video gets delivered on time. Right. Now, of course, this goes against the concept of net neutrality, which is that all traffic should be treated equally. Um, um, but so far, net neutrality has been used to, to talk about traffic being slowed down, not traffic being sped up. So this may yet work under uh, the net neutrality provision that Comcast is currently under until 2018. Now, the furthest Apple would be willing to go is that apparently, according to the Wall Street Journal, Apple wants to become a cable set-top box and just replace Comcast's existing X1 set-top box and be the uh, conduit and DVR through which Comcast cable content arrives. Now, you notice the problem here for consumers, which is that in all of these discussions, Apple seems completely uninterested in disrupting Comcast in any way. Yeah, they are, they, 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 the cable companies are winning. We'll get more, we have more details about this on PCMag.com. Also in the news, we want to talk about uh, <laughs> people spying on each other. The latest Snowden leak, if it's Monday, there's got to be a new Snowden leak. Does anyone leak. remember spy versus spy? Because that is totally what is happening here now. So the reports have come out. That everybody was concerned about Huawei's uh, telecommunications equipment because the Chinese might be building back doors into it. Lots of controversies in the U.S. Turns out the NSA is actually spying on Huawei <laughs> and going into their systems and monitoring them directly. Yep. This is a big, this is big news. Yeah, okay, so the thing with Huawei, Huawei is the third largest uh, handset phone maker and a huge network infrastructure maker, and everybody is convinced and has been convinced for years that there is some sort of connection between Huawei and the Chinese People's Liberation Army, but Huawei's uh, corporate structure is obscure enough that no one could ever quite figure it out. So, apparently the NSA started a plan called Shot Giant in 2007 and hacked into Huawei's servers and spied on their executives uh, so as to establish the link between Huawei and the People's Liberation Army. But it just, I mean, it just shows once again that apparently we're spying on everyone. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you should just assume that the NSA is spying on you. Whoever you are, anywhere in the world, looking at this YouTube, NSA spying on you through at least three things in your house. Yeah. This is, and this is, and again, this is this is what Snowden taught us. We didn't. We thought it before. We know it now. Also, some bad news for Microsoft. Microsoft has been saying that it would finish its Nokia acquisition in the first quarter. The first quarter is going to be up in about another week, and they do not look like they're going to make that deadline. And again, the problem is. Chinese regulators. Yeah, also speaking of China. So the uh, Microsoft Nokia acquisition went through in the US, went through in Europe, but in China, Google and Samsung uh, raised some questions before regulators saying that they wanted guarantees that patent licensing fees would not rise after Microsoft merged with Nokia. So the Chinese are mulling it over, and obviously this is going to go through, but it's an unexpected hitch. And the, the reason this is very bad timing is that Microsoft's big Windows Phone 8.1 launch uh, at their build conference is on April 2nd. And this entire time, Microsoft had been planning for the Microsoft Nokia deal to have been closed by then, and then this would be the big coming out for Microsoft and Nokia as one thing. And now it won't be, and that's a little awkward. And Microsoft really doesn't need any more bad news in mobile. Yeah, but it's going to happen. It's going to be delayed a little bit. It's just about pricing. They're going to haggle over the price. They're going to haggle over the fees. And then it is going to go through. It's just going to take a little bit longer. I bet they still come out big at build and act like they are one company, even if the, they've still got a few, uh, a few T's to cross. Let's move on to our reader question. We take reader questions on the YouTube comments, also via email, on Twitter, and on Facebook. Uh, our question today comes from Judy. She's got a 2004-era computer 
running XP, and she wants to know if she can run both Avast and Zone Alarm as they come from two separate companies. The answer is yes, of course she can. But she's worried about XP support ending, and she wants something that's very light and very efficient to protect her system. Right. So we asked our security expert, Neil Rubin King, and he said, don't bother with Avast and Zone Alarm. Uh, you need a comprehensive security package to basically take over where this Microsoft uh, XP support is leaving off. And so he suggested WebRoot Secure Anywhere Internet Security Complete. Uh, it is a single package. It covers everything soup to nuts, firewall, uh, firewall to antivirus, uh, and it works well on old, low resource systems. Yeah, so there you go. And you can read the full review, Neil's full review of WebRoot on PCMag.com. Let's move on to one cool thing. We test thousands of products here in the lab every year. Every day we take one thing off the shelf and show it to you live. Today, that thing is the very cool Rocket Rios MK Pro keyboard. It is a gaming keyboard. It is $160. That seems like a lot of money to pay for a keyboard, but this is not your average keyboard. Okay, I spent 60 seconds typing on this keyboard, and already I wanted to throw my laptop out a window. So that's that's one thing, first of all. Typing on this keyboard is beautiful. But uh, the this keyboard has a lot of special features for gamers. You've got your five macro keys down the side, your three macro keys at the bottom, whatever, that's table stakes, but you can configure any key on this keyboard as a macro key, hundreds of macros. There's a special macro shift button that allows you to configure anything. Now the backlighting, there's individual backlights behind each key, and there's an SDK so that it can be controlled with the games. So for instance, the keyboard backlighting can be your health bar, or the keyboard backlighting can give you information with various keys lighting up based on what's happening in your game. That's crazy. Yeah, and it comes with its own memory, it comes with its own processor, two processors, to help process all this and make sure you don't lose any keystrokes when you're gaming. This is our editor's choice. It's a fantastic keyboard. You can read the full review on PCMag.com. And that is PCMag Live for today. Tune in tomorrow, we'll have a brand new show for you. And remember to hit us up on the comments below this YouTube video. We'll answer your questions live on air. Thanks for joining us.